And Pastor Dre said we've been discussing revival, which means literally to come back to life, to be restored, to be renewed. But it's as if something was dead and it came back to life. And revival happens when we remove the old and we replace it. You got to get ready to receive something new, right? But it happens when the new comes and we're talking about something brand new. That's, that's what happens when his kingdom comes. When his kingdom comes, revival breaks loose. Hearts are healed. Lives are restored. Miracles happen. We're chasing after that. We're believing that for this community, this city. We're believing that his kingdom comes. Jesus said, hey, don't focus on your problem. Don't focus on that thing you got going on in your life. Just focus on me. Seek me. I think he said it somewhere else. Seek first the kingdom and all things will be added on to you. Today he's saying seek me because I'm making all things new. And I think today he'll be speaking to us about the brand new. The brand new. The Apostle Paul, which we had a little bit of fun last week talking about, he wrote a, a letter to a church in Galatia. He also planted numerous churches in a, a region called Corinth. Now, I speak of Corinth because Corinth is very similar to Houston, Texas. Uh, Corinth is a port city. It's very diverse ethnic, ethnically. It's very diverse racially. It's very uh, diverse spiritually. In other words, there was black folk, white folk, Hispanic folk, Catholic folk, Pentecostal folk, Baptist church but folk, and even some witches and warlocks all worshiping together in one church because the spirit of God was there and the kingdom come. Revival was happening. So he's speaking to this church. But he's, what he's telling them is, hey, don't look at your past. Don't look at the former things. Don't look at your old. Don't look at how you used to see God or how you were taught about God. Don't live in the former, in the old life. But I'm doing something brand new. He... he He's really trying to tell them, hey, look, God, if you allow him to, will do something brand new, even something unheard of. I'm believing that for us today. Are you ready? You ready, ready? Yeah. Let's see what Paul has to say to us. Out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17, he says, so then, from now on, in other words, hey, knock it off. How you used to be, no longer. From now on, we have a new perspective that refuses to evaluate people merely by their outward appearance. I, I, I got to be honest with you. I know that he's speaking to a, a group of people that have recently come to Christ. But I truly believe that this is a word for the church today. Specifically the Western American church. I, I've, I help plant churches in India and Iran. I've been to these places. They don't have the problems we have. The American church is the most divided church in the world. And it's all we're doing is evaluating on outward appearances. I need to say that because some religious folk jump on the feed and I got to shoot them away real quick. Either that or my Nirvana teacher is going to do it, right? One or the other. He says, hey. People merely by their Alberta. For that's how we once viewed the anointed one. He's talking about Jesus. That they, he, Paul, because he was a Pharisee, he once viewed Jesus that way. But no longer do we see him with limited human insight. Now, if anyone is unfolded into Christ, he has become entirely new creation. Brand new. All that is related to the old order has vanished is no longer behold focus everything is fresh and new let's pray father god i thank you i thank you for you choosing us as a people for such a time as this we thank you for your presence you've been here with us ministering to us caring for us comforting us revealing to us and continue to inwardly inspire us illuminate and change us lord Holy Spirit, help me. Help me deliver that message that you have downloaded into my spirit and burden me with passion and fire to deliver, Lord. I ask you to help me as I do my very best to honor and glorify your mighty name. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, Amen.
How many of you like brand new things? Only two people like brand. How many of you like brand new things? Come on now. Hey, you know, we y'all know we like to pop tags, right? Go to the mall, popping tags. We love it. You know, hey, look, the guys here, I see the room full of dudes. You know, we, we like the new fresh kicks. I got a rule. When I get new fresh kicks, I can't put them on with old socks. I got to get new socks. You know what I'm saying? Right? The ladies, I don't know how many, how many purses y'all need, but y'all love new purses, don't y'all? Yeah, you see what I'm saying? They do woo, yeah. You, you don't need another L at Louis V. Yeah, put that down, all right? We love brand new things, you know? It, it's just, it, it's, it, 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 we like brand new things. All right, let me give you another question. And let's be real. How many of you like to keep old things? How about hoard? How many of y'all hoarding old stuff? Come on now, let's be honest. I believe today the Holy Spirit is going to reveal some things that we've been hoarding on to that no longer belong to us. Can I tell you why people hoard? I discovered this. I didn't tell this the first service. You know why people are hoarders? They hoard because it gives them comfort. It's an addiction to control. I wonder if someone's receiving that today. However, a couple of weeks ago, we realized that the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 43, 19, I am doing something brand new, something unheard of. Something unheard of. But how come we still seeing, expecting, living, acting with that old mindset? You, you, ever, you ever wonder about that? The same world view? We, you know, listen. I said this to the first. We still living in that old mindset. Y'all are still worried about if there was a voter fraud or not. <laughs> Next! I mean, it was, it was arduous for me when I hear it, you know, when during it was happening. I'm like, okay, we inaugurated. We got a new president. Let's move on so the Lord can do something brand new. The former things. Trying to live the new still wearing the old. You just got a fresh pair of off-white J's and you put on some stand socks with some holes in them. Can't do that. Jesus said this. No one pours new wine into old wineskins. The way revival happened when you was a kid is not going to happen the way it happens today. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. And Jesus is not into ruining things. He's into creating new things. No, they pour new wine into wine. This is Mark chapter 2, verse 22. Once we remove the old, we got to replace it with something new. We can't continue to fill the new with the old. There's got to be a newer mind, a newer mindset, inwardly transforming us into what Paul says today, new creation. That's what 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says. The old is gone and the new is here. It's already here, can I tell you? We're just going to need a, a little bit of faith to realize that it's already here. Therefore, if the old is gone and the new is here, then it means we got to begin to live brand new. It means we got to start to act Brand new. Which brings me what I want to talk to you about today. Acting brand new. This is something that is used in popular culture. It started off in the street. And usually what things we start off in the street end up becoming pop culture. So I got to explain it to the folk that don't know what acting brand new means. So that you can understand in the context of how it ties in today's word. Let's say one of your homies, a friend... Or a girlfriend, to you ladies, all of a sudden got a new boyfriend or girlfriend. And all of a sudden, they used to call you every night. They're not calling you no more. 
they won't pick up your calls. You text them and they don't text you back. They don't come around anymore. They might even tell you, hey, I'm busy. I'm, I don't got time for you. I'm, I'm too good for you. I, you're on, on a different level now. I got a, I got a boyfriend. I got a girlfriend. They might be acting brand new. Hey, you picking up. You picking up. We all have this one friend. They always broke, right? Y'all know we got some cousins, some primos right now. Right now that are broke. They always ask you for 20 bucks. Got more than one. All right, we got some. We got some real honesty in the house today. And all of a sudden, they got a new job, and they're making twenty dollars an hour. You know, it's an oil and gas job. They working at the refinery out there in Baytown, and they making all kind of money. They got ten hours over teed overtime, and all of a sudden, them hundred dollars you let them borrow, they ain't answering your call either. They're not coming around. They got a whole new set of friends. They might be acting. How about this one? You got, a, you got a cousin, you got a friend, maybe even a sibling. And uh, they butthurt about something. They mad about something. They not getting their way, right? And they don't have the stones. They don't have the honor of confronting you with love. So they don't say hi to you. They start high-siding you. Another street reference. High-siding people is simply is they know you in the room. They just ignoring you. They acting like they don't see you. Knowing damn well I'm the loudest person in the room. I can't whisper. And they want to act like I, I, I didn't see him. Mentiroso. You know you saw me when I walked in shouting and yelling. I mean, I can't do nothing quietly. That, that's what that's that's what high side they ignoring you, and if they high side you, they might be acting brand new. Now this phrase also applies another way too, and this is how I'm gonna land on it today, and I'm gonna teach on it. However, sometimes people say you acted brand new because they just jealous, they envious, they can't believe you got out of that mess. They can't believe you happy again in a new relationship. They can't believe it. Maybe, maybe, maybe they say you acting brand new because they judgmental. And they don't understand it. They selfish. They full of hate. They full of bitterness. They full of vinegar. That's what religious people do. They say, oh, they acting brand new. Well, that's what the Lord calls us to do. You know, I've realized that bitter people, when they see others getting ahead in life, when they get promotion, when God elevates people, when God starts making a person successful because, you know, they've been tithing their money and God sees their faith. He starts opening up doors, getting promotions, raises, they start buying homes. They start saying, oh, they acting brand new. But the reality is, yeah, you're right. They're a new creation because they have faith in the king of the universe. Are you picking up what I'm dropping today? But I got to tell you why they say that. And I want you to remember this. Because you got people in your life like this. They comfortable with the struggling, unhealthy you. It makes them feel better about themselves. <laughs> so it's, it's all good. I am acting brand new. You feel me? I hope everybody in here is ready to act brand new. That's exactly what Paul is asking us to do. To be in Christ, to live in Christ, is to act brand new. So today, let's talk a little bit about acting brand new. 2 Corinthians 5 says, so now on, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, and the new is here. We talking, acting brand new. I'm going to tell you who was acting brand new last week. My production guy, Michael. He's back over there. Michael. Can y'all give it up for Michael? He keeps me on task. I'm going to put him on blast right now. If you see the verses take too long, that's him. It's on him. You can talk to him after service. Okay? He was acting. Let me tell you. 
he was acting brand new. He forgot. He forgot who I was or something, right? He wanted to give me a lecture. He, he, he texted me in between services because I was giving an illustration with my MacBook. And he said, hey, instead of saying iOS, I'm doing using his voice. You feel me? You picking up? And using iOS, use the term MacOS. iOS is used for phones. I know, man, so I know that. You're messing up my illustration. He was acting brand new. Technically, he is right, so I humbly say, yeah, he was right. But, but I wasn't trying to be technical. I was trying to be practical. I was trying to illustrate some to the people of God about what he wanted to deliver them today. However, it got me to thinking, you know, this is my old iPhone. I can't, can you believe I used to use this phone? Look at this. That's my bare paws. And somehow or another, I texted, and I look, like, how did I do it? This thing fits in your middle pocket or here in your front pocket. It's like a keychain. I could just put a keychain like this, just hang out, do it like a keychain. But this was our phone a few years ago. This phone, I held on to it. You know, I got an iPhone forever plan now. How many of y'all got an iPhone forever plan? I trade in every 18 months. <laughs> give me a new one. I'm always staying in the brand new. But back then, they didn't have that. And, you know, you had to give like a kidney to get one of these things. You know, I had to save up, I had to skip lunches and save money, all kinds of stuff just to get one. And then I couldn't even get the 256 megabyte. I had to get the like the lowest one, whatever it was, 16 gigs or whatever it is. Well, I kept this phone for a long time and I just kept downloading the new software update. I kept downloading the software update. But at some point, I put so many, you know, when you're in life, and I started out as a youth pastor. I just needed a few apps. But as I started venturing into church planting, I needed a, more apps. I needed one, that planning center, where it keeps all the teams in order. And I can see what songs are going to be played. Make sure they don't play a, a, a Rod, Pastor Rod doesn't like that song. I tell them, hey, I don't like that song. Never play it again. I don't tell them what to play, but I tell them songs. I never want to hear that worship song ever again. Ever, 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 ever. I heard people's feeling that way sometimes. But you see, there's some apps that I had on my phone, and I just kept adding and adding. Finally, I couldn't download anything else anymore. So I had to go get a new phone. It, machines are created, but humans are both created and formed. And we're formed by the experiences we have in life. We're also formed by the growth we have in life. So... Sometimes we outgrow the apps that we used to have. Are you picking up what I'm dropping? And, and so after a certain amount of time, you develop and you have to get new apps, but you got to let go of the old apps. Maybe, maybe, maybe some of these apps that are downloaded is, you know what? I'm a new creation in Christ. I don't need that Pornhub hub app anymore. I got to delete that one from my phone. I don't need that world star hip hop anymore. I'm going to delete that from my phone. Oh, that betting place I used to, I got to delete that from my phone. But we're also formed by the word of God and we're formed by the spirit of God. Which is why Paul was saying in Romans 12 2, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. In other words, we got to renew our minds. We can't transform if we still continue to think the old way. Jesus said you can't put a new person in the old person's body. You got to be recreated. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Now, I got to tell you, this happened to me. And it, it's a very personal thing for me. I want to show you a picture where it shows two people. There are things about me that no longer exist because I am a new creation that stands before you. The guy on the left is ruthless, brash, abrasive, addicted, arrogant, cocky, temperamental, prideful, defensive, just a broken man. Don't, don't mind his middle finger. He's hiding something, an addiction, suicidal thoughts, depression. The guy on the right is a new creation. He physically doesn't even look like the other guy. You know, for my birthday, back in December, someone called me and said, hey, 
You look younger than you did 13 years ago. What's your secret? You know what I said? I know it sounds really cheesy. I said, Jesus. I said, Jesus did it all. So you know what? Because of Jesus, I act brand new. I live brand new. I am brand new. That picture you saw of me, I was super unhealthy. You know, I weighed 315 pounds. High blood pressure, headed to diabetes, depressed, addicted, suicidal, just a miserable human being. However, all that changed with one thought. This is what I'm trying to tell you. One thought. I can't do this anymore, God. Whatever you ask me to do so I can change, I'll do it. You know what I did? I did it. I began acting brand new. I got to warn you, though. If you're going to act brand new, you're going to lose some people. You're going to lose some friends. You're going to lose some family. Maybe they weren't yours to begin with. The real ones will stay with you, will grow with you. They'll be like, you know what? I don't know what Johnny's doing, but I want some of him. I want to know whatever the Lord is doing in him, I need that in my life. Because I used to remember when he was down in the dumps, he was living like hell. And look at him, he's shining. He got joy in his life. I want some of that. Those are the real ones because the other ones just want you to be down in the dumps. They want you. They, you know what? They just want you to hang on to the old so they can feel better about themselves. We got to start acting brand new. I believe the new is already here. I believe the new exists already. We, you're beginning to feel it. We just need a little bit of faith. You just got to let go. You got to let go and let God have his way. I can't control it anymore. God, you, you, you control it. My way doesn't work. And as we do, I believe the brand new will download into new creations. Before we get to that, I want to show you some things that I thought about, some thoughts as I reflected on this text. And can I be honest with you? When I reflected on the fact that my life is revival and the fact that I want this revival for your life, for your families, for your businesses, for your careers, for your finances, for your for your church, for your community, for this city. But you know what we got to do? We're going to have to let go of the old to receive the new. If you, if you want to live in the new, you're going to have to let go of the old. This is simple, but it's also difficult. It's one simple step. Let go. Let God. We say that in AA, they say that to you all the time. And at first I was like, that's so dumb. And now it's one of the most powerful things I do. Let go and let God. It's simple, but it must be repeated, reiterated. We must remind ourselves. I journal about this. By the way, I literally bet, write down in my note, journal, hey, this is how I need to remind myself how I'm going to be better today because I need to be a new creation today because th the idiot from yesterday doesn't need to come back. It's a constant reminder we have to live in. Because the reality of it is, as you venture through life, you know, you have an enemy. Y'all know that, right? And you know what the enemy loves to do? He loves to remind you of that mistake you did last year, last night, the mistake you did yesterday, the mistake you did, last, the thing you call that person and you have to forgive them or you have to apologize. He's going to remind you of your old, just like the old apps are going to remind you used to, oh, I used to watch Pornhub. Oh, I used to live on World Star Hip Hop. Oh, I used to bet all the time. It's gonna, the enemy loves to remind us of our past, our mistakes, our failures, our sin. But can I tell you, God doesn't live there. He doesn't do that. How do I know that? Because of the book of Hebrews repeats what God said in the book of Exodus when he told the Israelites, I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Then King David wrote, Psalms 103, 12, he has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. And today Paul is saying, the old is gone and the new is here. So let it come. So what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for to let go of the old and start acting brand new? What are we waiting for? This 
is in your mind. And over time, you begin to tell yourself things like, I'm just this way. This is why you got to read the Bible all the time. Because it reminds you who you really are. Because your mind will tell you, I'm just this way. My parents were broke. I'm going to be broke. I'm just that way. My dad had a temper. I got a temper. I'm just like my daddy. I'm just like my mama. Instead of preaching the gospel, we go around preaching the gospel of Prince. Y'all know what that is? He says, maybe I'm just too demanding. Maybe I'm just like my father, too bold. Maybe I'm just like my mother. She's never satisfied. Y'all don't know Prince? That's when the doves cry. That's one of my favorite songs. Well, you got to admit we do that, right? We look for excuses to hold on to the old because it makes us comfortable. I'm this. I'm that. Sometimes, secretly, we want what others have because it reminds us of where we used to be and we long to get back. I don't know if you know this, but when you go buy a new phone, you trade in this phone, you get this phone, and you get the iCloud, and you, get, you, you, you put your code in there, it starts downloading the, the apps you had in your old phone, even though you deleted them, so that all those apps you didn't need no more, all of a sudden they start downloading into your phone. The, the Israelites did this as well. The Israelites, when they were getting daily downloads of manna, they got, they got it for a few years. And after a while, they were like, man, I wish we could eat the meat that we had when we were slaves. We can have the onions and the garlic and the leek. They were beating us, but we was eating meat. It's just what made them comfortable. At the end of the year, last year I had to get new glasses. I had to get new prescription because I hadn't been in a couple of years. I was driving down to get my glasses, and, and I asked God, hey, as you physically give me new lenses, Lord, would you give me spiritual lenses so I can see better? I'm praying this at the light, and in the moment, I had texted uh, Anya, one of our volunteers and social media consultants, to send me her boyfriend's contact information i wanted to snitch on her about some stuff i'm just playing i just wanted his contact info um and i had forgotten because she's so busy she forgets to text me back right away right and i'm impatient so i was like ah forget her i'll just figure out another way to get it and in that moment when i said amen literally in the moment she had texted me back maybe god intended it that way you ever been impatient with God where you're asking for something, you want it now, you want it now, you want it now, but he gives it right to you on time? This is what happened to me. It was in that moment I had been asking for something and I was impatient with her and I was like, forget her. I probably was like, oh, you know, she's this, she's probably at another event. I was all talking crap. But instead, God was being on time. Because as I said, man, the, the phone hit my, my, my text and her boyfriend's contact info came in. And it said, now, mind you, her boyfriend's name is Elijah Garcia. But her contact said, Garcia, my love. <laughs> Little heart. Isn't that cute? She's a millennial. <laughs> I never see millennials put people's names in the contact information. It's always some code word. The wifey, baby doll, little baby. I saw my boy Joey, had a, he has a friend called Lil the Baby. And I'm like, dang, he took two rappers and made one nickname out of them. I want another story behind that one. <laughs> but as I saw that contact information, remember what I just asked God. Watch what, I, watch what happens. Remember I told God, hey, give me spiritual lessons to see so I could be better. I said under my breath, I wish my wife would put my contact like that in her phone. I mean, Rodriguito. <laughs> My own personal Iron Man. Big sexy. Right? Rodrigo Downey Jr. Hey! <laughs> you can have fun in church, y'all. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit. 
said her contact information on her phone is dad two hearts you're a new creation so her contact on her phone your name is dad simply dad is that not enough rod for you to be like me to be identified with your daddy dad man you talk about getting preached to in that moment i was like okay this is where my conviction i want to be better i, I want to be a better husband I want to be a better dad. I want to be good. I want to be a good daddy. I want to be there and support my daughters. I want to be there and chew out my son. You know, you support your daughters, but you got to chew out your sons. You know what I'm saying? Like, son bien tercos. I mean, dude, my son, I tell him 17 times, he's still on the same stuff. I'm like, bro, what? Up? we already talked about this. The girls, they can do this. They say, oh, you're beautiful. You're excellent. You're going to be great. I want to be better. I want to be dad. So dad is good enough. I had to let go of the old. I'm not a baller anymore. I ain't a player no more. I'm not in and out of strip clubs no more. I'm just dad. And that got me to acting brand new. We tend to hold on to the old because it's programmed in us. Like the automatic iCloud. It, 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 it's programmed in, in us by ourselves by others and experiences, but we hold on. Here's, we hold on to them because it gives us a sense of control. Here's what I discovered. The old gives us comfort because we control it. <sighs> you got to think about that. I'm comfortable because I can control it. It's not what we know. It's what we are used to. That's what we're used to, but it might not be good for us. It's nostalgic. It reminds us of back in the day. It's generational. I just said it earlier. Oh, my dad, my mom, my grandpa. But can I tell you, it's not God. What we control gives us comfort. Let's face it. When we're not in control, we're super uncomfortable. I don't know too many people that are like, oh, yeah, I love to skydive. You know why people are scared to skydive? Because you're not in control. You're falling from the sky. We've been talking about revival, and it's here. But also, revival happens when we let go. So some of us are not experiencing that revival. Some of you are not living that revival. Some of you are not benefiting from that revival. Because simply, you haven't allowed God to take control. You've allowed social media to tell you what's wrong with you. i never seen... A group of people get all their diagnosis from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now TikTok. Oh, TikTok's everything. You can get recipes, uh, psychological diagnosis. You can get everything from TikTok. It will be uncomfortable to let go. It will be unconventional. It will be inconvenient. But it will be transformational. My question is, what old identity... What old experience, what words were spoken over your life? What kind of trauma are you carrying, abuse, mistakes, failures, or sin? What have you allowed to control you? I'm sorry, did I say control you? I meant what have you gotten comfortable with? Because what you got comfortable with is what's presently controlling you. We feel comfortable simply because we think we can control, and let's be honest, we're not good at controlling anything in our world around us. It's time we give him control. It's time to let in the new, and we begin to act brand new. Listen, the last thing I want to tell you is <laughs> the new brings about change because daddy's in control. That's when real change happens. When he's in control. The new is unpredictable, but it's good. The new is unexpected, but it's prosperous. The new is unseen, but it's for our future. That's why you can't see it. Just know it's going to be there. And it's generational. You pass it on to your children's children. Most importantly, what you need to allow is his spirit to move in this space right here. 
This is the toughest space for the Holy Spirit to move in. When we allow the Holy Spirit to move in this place and in this space, we allow him in. The brand new begins to get downloaded. Change happens. We get rearranged. Simply because he's in control, not us. And all that you need is faith. The new means change. And it's changed because he is change. I remember when we first launched the church, we put this on our website, not realizing we would be talking about revival five years later. But we put on the website, we are the change we want to see, not realizing that that's exactly what revival is. We are the change we want to see for good, for the better, for prosperity, for our future, for our children's children. Can I tell you, <laughs> there will be troubles. I don't want you to think that you came to church today just to hear a good tickle your ear. There's going to be trouble. You're going to have problems. And can I tell you, especially if you're doing, if you're doing something for God and you're living for God and you are in Christ, you're going to get opposed because the enemy hates you and he wants to take you down and he wants to steal your joy and he wants to take everything from you. You're going to be opposed. But the word of God said, it shall not prosper. And those of us that give God control, he will make sure, he will make sure for your, his name's sake, that you prosper. What needs to change? What, what, what do I need to release control of? What have I gotten comfortable with? controlling me we need change we want change we want a good we want the better Chris you want the better I want better we want prosperity we want a brighter future for us generations it's here but it's going to take us acting brand new it's going to take us acting brand new it's going to take us living and being brand new come alive means that I'm going to have to come alive. It, it means that I got to come alive in the name of Jesus. That means that I can't, I can't be in control because it's his name I carry. I come alive when I release that control. And we bring everything, 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 those bills, that, that pain, that old, the past, the, the grief, the troubles, the problems, the depression, the worry, the doubt. I got to bring it and lay it right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, everything at the feet of Jesus. I come alive when I bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name.
John chapter 4 Jesus goes out of his way I mean Jesus was on mission he was doing things for his daddy and he said man I, 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 I'm going to have to go through Samaria because there's a woman She's a Samaritan. She's been married five times. She's sleeping around with some dude. She's living in sin. But she's been living in this old, she's been living in this old mindset. She's been shackled. She's a prisoner to what people say, to the critics, to the cynics, to the religious, to her sin. I got to go. She's got to come alive. She's looking for water, but I'm going to give her living water and she's going to come alive. And he goes, takes a detour, goes around and goes to Samaria. And he approaches this woman. You know, what's funny is I'm going to talk about love next week, but he doesn't tell her. You messed up. Repent. All oh, the street preachers love that. He has a conversation with her. And you know, what happens next is incredible. Because after a few sentences of a conversation with the living God, she realizes this is the Messiah. This is the anointed king. This is the savior of the world. This is the one we've been waiting for. And he's gone out of his way to meet me at my well. And she comes and she's the first one to recognize him as the Yahweh, as the Messiah, the great I am, that she is the first one. But watch what happens. She was coming to the well at midday because she was so tired. I wonder if there's someone in this room that's tired of being called something. I wonder if you're tired of be calling yourself something. I wonder if you've been labeled something and you've been going around telling yourself about that you are a certain way and that's been taunting you. But Jesus has gone out of his way to meet you here at 2800 Antoine on a Sunday afternoon and he is telling you, no, 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 no. And when she realizes who he is and accepts him, she leaves everything behind. And she starts running through the streets praying to Jesus, praising Jesus, worshiping Jesus, preaching Jesus, knocking on every door because what used to be a loose woman sleeping around had become a child of God. Revival had come to Samaria. Would you stand to your feet just in this moment, wherever you may be. With every head bowed and every eye closed, Father God, we thank you. Or there is someone right now at their well. There's someone right now, and you've met them. And there's a past that's been taunting them. But right now in this moment, what you're doing is, you're claiming them as your own. In this moment, they're gonna make a step. And they're gonna say, no longer am I that, but I'm gonna come alive in the name of Jesus by accepting you as Lord, Savior, and King. If that's you, would you raise your hand so we can pray for you wherever you may be in your living rooms and your bedrooms. Just raise your hand. There you go. Hands going up. Father God, we thank you for the hands that are going up. We thank you for revival. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for the word of God and we thank you for the spirit of God because it is where your spirit is. We come alive and we pray this in the name of Jesus.